Jupiter is essentially a large hydrogen-rich ball, yet it has proven to be quite complex and deeply mysterious. It's the largest planet in the solar system, yet we still know very little about it. Jupiter is mostly made of gas and liquid, and it has a violent atmosphere. But what's going on beneath its red and white clouds? What strange occurrences have been caught on camera? In this video, we're going to take a look at the most incredible and frightening images captured of Jupiter. There is no shortage of fascinating images taken of Jupiter. To be sure, the king of the planets has proven itself more than worthy of its title. With thunderheads that tower 40 miles high and stretch half the width of a continent and enormous storms that rage for centuries, scientists are always left in awe when we get a good look at the gas giant. Many aspects of its volatile and ever-changing atmosphere remain a mystery, despite more than 400 years of scientific observation. The Juno spacecraft teamed up with NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and the ground-based Gemini Observatory in Hawaii to investigate the solar system's most powerful storms, which occur more than 500 million miles away on Jupiter. The Hubble Space Telescope, Gemini Observatory and Juno spacecraft have been working together to study storm systems. Scientists can now monitor Jupiter's weather and estimate the amount of water in the atmosphere thanks to this unusual partnership, which offers insights into how the planet operates today and how it and the other planets in our solar system evolved more than four and a half billion years ago. The Great Red Spot is the planet's most recognizable feature, a storm that is larger than planet Earth itself. Besides the fact that it is the greatest storm in the solar system, it can be compared to the storms we encounter right here at home. The depth of the Great Red Spot was a mystery, even though its width was well known. On the other hand, Juno was able to have a glimpse inside. Juno is a NASA orbiter, which is a spacecraft that orbits the Earth. Launched from Earth in 2011, it arrived at Jupiter in 2016 after a five-year voyage and has been circling and analyzing the planet ever since. Juno's orbit traveled above the Great Red Spot in 2019, allowing it to explore the storm with its microwave radiometer. Researchers found that the storm had a height of almost 200 miles, which was far higher than expected. This indicates that the storm is located below the layer where the sun may warm the atmosphere and above the layer where the water droplets condense and clouds form. Scientists look for the Great Red Spot's gravity signature, which can be detected due to the storm's massive size, to confirm the MWR's findings. A NASA Deep Space Network tracking antenna measured one nanometer per second of velocity change. They concluded that the Great Red Spot's depth does not exceed 300 miles below the cloud tops, confirming the NWR's findings that it is over 200 miles deep, which is far deeper than previously thought. Jupiter features clockwise cyclones and anticyclones that rotate counterclockwise, just like Earth. An anticyclone is what we see in the Great Red Spot on Jupiter. There are many deep storms on the planet, but the MWR also discovered that Jupiter's storms are warm and dense at the top, but cold and dense at the bottom. There are three ways to look at Jupiter. Gemini North and the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope captured stunning photographs of Jupiter in the infrared, visible and ultraviolet wavelengths of light. The great red spot, superstorms and massive cyclones that stretch across the planet's disk are all seen in detail in these pictures. These three interactive graphs let you compare Jupiter observations at various wavelengths and study the gas giant's clouds for yourself. Observing planets and other celestial objects at various wavelengths of light allow scientists to gain previously unattainable insights. These three portraits demonstrate the key advantage of multi-wavelength astronomy. In the case of Jupiter, studies in the infrared, visible and ultraviolet wavelengths provide a dramatically different picture of the planet. It is easy to see the planet's great red spot in visible and ultraviolet light, but infrared photographs reveal almost nothing of the storm system. 
In contrast, Jupiter's counter-rotating bands of clouds can be seen clearly from all three angles. Infrared images of the Great Red Spot reveal that the black area is greater than the equivalent red oval in the visible image, which is surprising. It shows thick clouds, while visible and ultraviolet observations show the locations of chromophores, the particles that give the Great Red Spot its distinctive hue by absorbing blue and ultraviolet light. This discrepancy arises because different structures are revealed by different wavelengths. In these photographs, the Great Red Spot is there, but there are also other storm systems. Both visible and ultraviolet images show the oval BA region, which is sometimes referred to as Red Spot Junior. In the year 2000, three storms of comparable size merged to form the storm to the lower right of its larger counterpart. Visible light images show a red outer rim with a white core, which is clearly delineated in the visible spectrum. On the other hand, the infrared image shows no sign of Red Spot Junior because it is obscured by the darker band of colder clouds. Chromophores in Red Spot Junior absorb ultraviolet and blue wavelengths of solar radiation, giving it a reddish hue when observed under visible light and a black appearance when observed under ultraviolet light, just like the Great Red Spot. There is a diagonal white streak flowing toward Jupiter's right side, just above Red Spot Junior, in the visible observations of a Jovian superstorm. However, Red Spot Junior is not always red in Hubble's visible light view of Jupiter obtained in January 2017. A few years after it was formed, it developed a reddish-brown color. In the intervening time, it has darkened and now seems white. It is safe to say that the three storms that formed Red Spot Junior in the year 2000 were of comparable size, both individually and together. However, Red Spot Junior remained the same size as any of the three storms that merged after they were combined. A bright streak in Jupiter's northern hemisphere is one atmospheric phenomenon that is visible at infrared wavelengths. This feature, which could be a cyclonic vortex or a series of vortices, stretches nearly 45,000 miles east to west. The cyclone appears dark brown at visible wavelength, earning it the nickname Brown Barges in NASA's Voyager spacecraft images. However, at ultraviolet wavelengths, the feature is barely visible beneath a layer of stratospheric haze that darkens as it approaches the North Pole. Similarly, four large hotspots appear bright in the infrared image, but dark in both the visible and ultraviolet views, lined up beneath the brown barge. When astronomers first observed Jupiter in infrared wavelengths in the 1960s, they discovered such features. These observations provide insights into Jupiter's atmosphere, with each wavelength probing different layers of cloud and haze particles and providing a beautiful scenic tour of the planet. In places where NASA's Juno spacecraft detected radio signals emanating from lightning activity, a team of astronomers used telescope data to evaluate the cloud structure. It has been found that the Great Red Spot's dark features appear, fade and change shape over time in images from Juno and prior missions to Jupiter. If these are created by some unexplained dark-coloured element within the high cloud layer, or if they are instead holes in the high clouds, windows into a deeper, darker layer below, it was not obvious from individual photographs. It is now possible to address the ignorance by comparing visible light Hubble photographs with thermal infrared images from Gemini recorded within hours of each other. Infrared light reveals cloud holes that appear dark in the visible spectrum, suggesting their existence, while infrared radiation emitted from Jupiter's interior, which is otherwise blocked by high-level clouds, is free to escape into space in cloud-free places and, hence, appears bright in photographs taken by Gemini. Juno has also discovered that Jupiter's polar cyclones are stationary. Juno discovered a big cyclone near Jupiter's North Pole, with eight other cyclones surrounding it, and another massive cyclone at Jupiter's South Pole, with six other cyclones surrounding it when it first arrived. In recent years, scientists have discovered that the motion of the cyclones is impacted by one another. 
This indicates that the cyclones have a lot of depth in them. As with storms on Earth, all of the cyclones desire to migrate poleward, but the large cyclones in the heart of each pole prevent that from happening. This equilibrium aids scientists in deciphering why each cyclone is located where it is. Juno's primary mission ended in July 2021, but NASA approved a mission extension. Even when it runs out of fuel in 2025, the mission will keep examining our largest planet and its rings and moons. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more amazing content.